Open up your Bibles. Yeah. Praise God. I want you to go to Matthew chapter 6. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Matthew chapter 6. Pastor Veronica, are you here today? All the way in the back. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Matthew chapter 6. Begin verse 19. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Real quick, you notice it's not God's treasure, it's your treasure. Amen. Amen. It's your in other words, when, when, you, when you store up your treasures in heaven, you're not losing them. They're still yours. Matter of fact, not only are they yours, but God protects it. God increases it and blesses it. Amen. And it comes back to you way better than you can even imagine. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell, tell your neighbor, it's your treasure. Amen. How many of y'all know that, that, we're, we're only, that you're only one computer glitch away from your entire wealth just being wiped out it's all make-believe money is just make-believe and and it's just about people's opinion about what you what you have and own you can even have a, a paper that says that you own this property and somebody could come and rework that paperwork underneath your your feet where where it just they remove it completely off your ownership and so if you think that, that paper is going to back you up or that the dollar is going to be your defense, you're serving the wrong God. And you're, you're believing the, a lie because it's all make-believe. You know, how many of you have ever traveled to different countries outside of Mexico and the United States? How many of you all been to different countries? When you go to those different countries, you know, you, you usually get the lo local currency, you know, and the... Uh, you don't know what that dollar is going to be worth. You give them $1, sometimes they give you seven of their, their currencies. I went to uh, Uganda, and at the airport, I gave them $100 to change. And they gave me 300,000 shillings. <laughs> I looked at all that, that, that currency. I was like, I'm rich. <laughs> it's just make-believe. Amen. Hallelujah. It's just paper. Amen. And so don't serve money. You have to serve God. In verse 22, it says, Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. Where your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate the one and love the other. You will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. And all the church says amen. amen. And so it talks to you about the eye, what you're looking at, what you're focused at, why you do what you do. If you're doing it for money, you're serving the wrong master. You're not serving God. You're serving money. And money makes a terrible master. It never offers you the joy and the peace that you think you might need or desire. Only God can give you peace and joy and satisfaction in life. Only God can, be, can take you to a place of peace complete blessing what good is having a house if there's nobody in that house to enjoy it yeah. what good is having money if you don't have health yeah. what good is having the the wealth of this world if you're lost and on your way to hell yeah. can't serve god in no one ever ever goes to their grave and on their deathbed and calls all their family together Children, I have to tell you one thing that I regret. 
I wished I worked one more day. <laughs> nobody. Nobody. But every one of us would want to know that we lived our life and joined our family and being a blessing to our, our community and serving the Lord. Amen. And so you can't serve God or money. You have to choose the one you really serve. The one that Lord. The Bible says your eye is a lamp. So if your, if your eye is singular, you know, if your eye is focused on the things of God, great is the light. You're always thinking, praise the Lord. You're always thinking, God, yes, I'm going to do the will of the Lord. You're always thinking, what can I do to serve God? You're waiting for the Holy Spirit to speak to you, and you are excited about the future. But if your eye is about money, you're always thinking about the deal. You're always thinking, what can I do to convince this person that has something to get it out of their pocket and put it to me? And what can I do to get this person to sign away their future so that I can own and possess their wealth? Not just today, but in their future. For the next five years, they'll work for me. That's slavery. That's debt. Amen. The Bible, says, the Bible says, owe no man nothing except for the debt of love. And thank God, Jesus knows how to set us free, amen? He knows how to set you free from debt. Some of you might be facing debts that you can't pay right now, and you're thinking, I, I, I didn't know, I made mistakes, you know, I got out of debt, but then they, they sent me a credit card that had my favorite football team's name on it, I just had to use it. <laughs> or they, they, they showed up with this new new car and I just had to do it and some of you are, are facing those things if you would take your debts and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you this just I'm going to go on with the word this, this is not just about debt but I'm going to give you a secret on how to get that debt paid off how many of you want to get the secret to pay, get the debt paid off quickly in Jesus name you ready if you would get that debt that, grab that piece of paper and even tonight, you can't, wait, you can't wait for two weeks, three weeks. You have to do it tonight, amen? If you were to grab those pieces of paper, because if it doesn't move you now, that means it's not real, amen? But if, if it moves you now, that means you have faith that it's gonna, something's going to happen, amen? And so grab those pieces of paper that, that has all the debts, car loans, uh, student aid, student, student loans, uh, credit cards, whatever it is, get all those pieces of paper that, they, that, that tell you what you owe, uh, mortgages, whatever it is, amen? How many of you believe that God could pay off your mortgage? Yes. Get all that and put it on, the, on your bed. Lay it out so you can see it. Don't put it upside down. Look at it. Look at it all. Look at it all right in the eye. And then throw your body on top of it and lay on top of it. And then cry out to God and say, Father, forgive me for getting into debt. Deliver me, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name. And as you do, watch how quickly God will run to your defense. Watch how you'll start getting notices that things were canceled. Watch how you'll see increase that will come into your hand, but it's not for you to eat. That money comes in. It's for, it's for God sent it in so that you could, you could not only be a blessing, but pay off that debt and watch how it go quickly in Jesus' name. Amen. How, 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 many, how many of y'all believe that that will work in Jesus' name? Amen. I mean, you could be like the rest of the disciples and say, I can't walk on the water. This ain't going to happen. Or you could be like Peter and say, well, Jesus there, I'm going too. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Do that tonight. Amen. Everybody say tonight. tonight. Hallelujah. So it says you cannot serve God or money. Amen. This, that was not my message today, but it's part of it. <laughs> the, the title of my, my message tonight is Don't Work for Laban. Don't Work for Laban. Amen. Now, if you can, go to Genesis chapter 28. The first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 28. Oh, you're going to be blessed today. I'm so excited about this word. Amen. Hallelujah. Genesis 28, beginning verse 10. Meanwhile, Jacob left Beersheba and traveled towards Haran. At sundown sundown he arrived at a good place to set up camp and stop there for the night Jacob found a stone to rest his head against and lay down to sleep as he slept he dreamed of a stairway that reached from the earth up to heaven he saw the angels of God going up and down the stairway at the top of the stairway stood the Lord and he and he said I am the Lord, the God of your grandfathers, Abraham, the God of your father, Isaac. The ground you are lying on belongs to you. I am giving it to you 
and your descendants. Your descendants will be as numerous as the dust of the earth. They will spread out in all directions to the west and to the east, to the north and the south, and all the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your descendants. What's more, I am with you. I will protect you wherever you go. One day, I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything I have promised you. How many of you agree that Jacob just got blessed? He just got blessed. God showed up and said, listen, this is something that I promised to your father that was going to happen in his life and in their and and in your life, too, and in your children's life. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to bless you. God said, I'm going to bless. Jacob didn't cry out, God, would you please bless me? No, God showed up to Jacob. God gave him revelation so he could receive it. He shouted down from heaven and said, hey, Jacob, I bless you. I bless your kids. I bless your, your descendants and every, this land is yours. It's yours, Jacob. Jacob didn't ask for it. He didn't cry for it. He, he, he just, God just chose Jacob and said, I'm going to bless you. Because your daddy, I'm blessing you. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that when we have given our life to the Lord, we've been adopted into the family of God. Amen. And so we have a new family. We are now part of the family of God, and we're also part of the family of Abraham. Amen. God said, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Kevin. <laughs> amen? amen. You now have a father. Amen. amen. Say, he's the God. Of Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, Isaac, Jacob, Jacob. and then give your name. Say, he's my God. God. Amen. And so he has put this blessing upon you. The blessing of Abraham is upon you. Amen. Amen. Say, the blessing blessing of Abraham Abraham is upon me. me. And the blessing of Abraham is that God will bless you and make you a blessing. And wherever you go, you're going to be a blessing. Amen. Even when it looks like you don't have anything to bless anybody with, God somehow, some way will bless you so that you can be a blessing. And the Bible says that through you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that God's going to raise up people with so much of his blessing that you're going to be able to do for this world what man could not do for themselves. I believe that we're going to be able to build schools, that we'll be able to to build build things that will be blessing this world, that we'll be able to feed people that are hungry, that we'll be able to wipe out diseases under the glory of God. Amen. I believe that we'll be able to do things that are a blessing to this world because of the blessing of the Lord. We'll be able to do things in the spirit and we'll be able to do things in the flesh because of the blessing of the Lord. Amen. It's not limited to just a prayer. Amen. Amen. The Bible says through you all nations will be blessed. I I speak this word over your life because I believe that the curse of poverty is broken off this real Grandy Valley forever. And I believe that you're going to be the generation that's going to walk into that blessing in the name of Jesus. Amen. That through you, your children shall be blessed. Your grandkids shall be blessed. Amen. The Bible says a, a, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Amen. I believe that we have some good men and women in this place that are going to leave inheritance for their children's children's children. Amen. Hallelujah. And so Jacob was blessed. Everybody say, Jacob was blessed. Jacob was blessed. Now, Jacob was on a, on, a, on a mission. He was sent to a land to go get a wife. The Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. And so he went to his uncle's house that he didn't know about. And while he was over there, heading that way, there were shepherds getting ready to give water to the sheep. And he asked about his uncle, and they said, yeah, he's doing good. And right when he was talking to the shepherds about it, another shepherd showed up, but this was not a, sh- a-, a-, a male, it was a female. And the shepherd's name was Rachel. And Rachel was carrying the, was bringing the sheep to the wall. And the other shepherd said, hey, that's his daughter. Jacob's thinking, that's who I came looking for. The Bible says that he loved Rachel. 
Now, it, I understand that we're supposed to be holy, right? But when you read the Bible, it says that he fell in love with her because she had a good figure. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. So, you know, that, and that she had a twinkle in her eye. Amen? Now, she had another sister, an older sister, but there was no twinkle in her eye. <laughs> That's, that's what the Bible says. It literally says there was no twinkle in her eye, you know. In other words, you know, she, she, wa she wasn't very, she wasn't Rachel. Her name was Leah, all right. Jacob, he said, that's the one. That's the one I was looking, I, I, I need her. I don't just want her, I need her. And he went up to his uncle and he said, I really want to marry your daughter. I will work for you for seven years for your daughter. How many of y'all agree that's love? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, uh, you, you, you fathers, when a man starts coming over your house looking for your daughter's hand, and he's willing to say, listen, seven years I'll work for their hand, the hand of your daughter. You know, you're going to have to make a decision. <laughs> <laughs> but just, you know, he's there. And, 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 and you know, Laban's like, yeah. Fruit. And the Bible says that everything that Jacob did, taking care of the sheep, that Jacob was so good and so blessed. Why was he blessed at, at taking care of the sheep? Why did the sheep grow? Why, the Bible says that, that he, made, he made Laban very wealthy taking care of the sheep. Why? Was it because Jacob was just very talented? Was it because Jacob was just a really good guy? He had all the skills to be the greatest shepherd in the world? Why was Laban blessed? Because of the work of Jacob. Because God blessed Jacob. Yes, amen. Jacob could not fail but to be blessed. Jacob was condemned to blessings. Amen. You're condemned to blessings in Jesus' name. Yes, yes, yes. Whatever he touched prospered. Yes. The Bible says, and, and Jacob worked seven years faithfully. He made Laban wealthy. I don't know what happened in the wedding. I don't know what, 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 I don't know if they just started drinking of the vine too much. But Jacob got married and he went to his wedding night. And when he woke up, it was not the woman with the twinkle in her eye. <laughs> he woke up to Leah. He runs to his father-in-law. Hey, 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 my uncle. I worked seven years for Rachel. <laughs> now I'm married to Leah. That wasn't the agreement. The uncle made, made up an excuse. Yeah, you know, but she's the older one. You know, it's not good. It's not a tradition to have the younger one to, to marry before the older one. He says, listen, you're such a good... You're a good guy. I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. If you really want to marry Rachel, work for me seven more years. But Rachel had the twinkle in her eye. He agreed to it. He worked another seven years. You know, the first seven years, the Bible says that he loved Rachel so much that the seven years that he worked for her were just like that. The first seven years, it was, like, it was like a day. But now he had to work another seven years. And at the end of those seven years, now he's married to Rachel. Amen? Amen. But so he goes, to, he goes to, to Laban. I'm going someplace. Come with me to Children's Church today. Amen? After, the, after all that, he goes to Laban, he says, listen, I made you wealthy, very wealthy. But what about my house? What about me having some wealth and me, me building up wealth for my family? And he makes out a deal with him. And, and, and Laban is like, yeah, you made me wealthy. 14 years of serving, you know, you made, you, 
you're the man, you're the man, Jacob. Yeah, you did. Whatever you want, whatever you want, you, you blessed me. You, you did really good for, for my house. You really, you did some good stuff for us. Whatever you want. We're so thankful. We're so thankful. You know, we're so thank you for your 14 years of dedicated service to this, this company of Laban Incorporated. You have really done a good job working for us. And, and, and what, whatever we can do to, do to be a good blessing to you. Whatever you want so that you can have a, a little bit of the wealth that we have. Tell me, what, what do you want? And Jacob said, okay, this is what I want. You keep the perfect sheet. Just give me the ones that have the spots, the, the, that, that are, are black, that are colored. Uh, you give me the ones that, that you know, have something wrong with them. I'll take those. Any, any with spot, anything with spots, you know. You, I'll take those. You keep the perfect ones. And that will be my payment. I will be content with that. And Laban's thinking, that's a good deal for him. So he says, okay. Okay, Jacob. You can have all the spotted sheep. All the, the, the sheep that are not white. You can have those, those sheep. And, and, and I'll just keep the ones that are perfect. But you know what Laban did? After he made the deal? Laban told his sons, he said, listen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to remove all the spotted sheep from the herd. And then I want you to take them on a three-day journey away so that when Jacob goes out to grab the spotted sheep, he finds no sheep. Isn't that terrible? He says, okay, you can have it. But then he, then he says, just get rid of them so that he can't even find them. That's terrible. But you know what, you know what, uh, you know what Jacob did? He didn't get discouraged when he went and saw that there was no more spotted sheep. God had told them what to do. He had put something before them as an image. And when they began to conceive, they saw the, 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 the stripes and, and, the, and the spots and they began to conceive and the babies that were born were all spotted and colored. Amen. Were all the perfect sheep they eventually died away. And all the, the sheep that were alive were only the ones that had spots or wrinkles or, 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 or colored, amen? amen? The Bible says that Laban just took all the, all the sheep. Pretty much they took all the wealth. Uh, uh, where Jacob just took all the wealth. Where Laban was like, I'm, you, you, you took all my wealth. You took all those things. When, La when, when Jacob talked to his wives, about this deal. He says, it's time for us to go. Your father's angry at us because now we got everything. Jacob told his wives, he said, listen, even though all those things happened where your father was causing us destruction and stealing from us, and he changed my wages 10 times, he changed my wages 10 times. He wanted to keep us in poverty while he became blessed because of the blessing of God upon my life. Even though all, he did all those things, God gave me a dream and showed me what to do. God told him exactly what to do, and if he just did it, those sheep were going to come out the way that they, they now belong to him. Amen. I'm telling you this because if you live your life Following man, serving man, they will always change your wages. They will always steal from you. And the system that you get you're a part of will always put you down instead of lifting you up. It's not a coincidence, right? When you think that you're getting to a place of blessing, something happens. You get into a car. And you think this is the car. Oh, it has a twinkle in its eye. I need this. <laughs> I dedicate the next six years of my life working for you. <laughs> and you, you worry and then you struggle and you work and work and work. And then it's finally, it's paid off. But then the next month it breaks. And you got to look for another thing with a twinkle in its eye. Yeah. For another seven years to serve it. 
And you're always serving something. You're always serving something. And, it, and what it does, it puts you in chains so that you cannot serve God freely. I can't tell you how many people that graduated from Bible school, that went to Bible school with me, and I, I see them today and I say, bro, how, how you doing? Are you preaching the gospel? I heard, I remember you saying that you're going to do crusades over there, that you were going to do this and you were going to establish the work of God. You're going to build a church. And they would look at me and they say, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I just need a few more years to build up some wealth so I could do that. And they don't realize that they had just been put in the trap of the devil to keep the gospel from coming out of their mouth. I know worshipers, some of the greatest worshipers, that when they begin to sing, the glory of God comes down. People are healed. Prophetic words are being declared. The lives of people are transformed. Devils are being rebuked. They carry such an anointing upon their life. But they don't have any time to worship God now because they're, they're too busy trying to build some sort of wealth to put food on the table. When Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to your life. Amen. There are people that God is calling you to become great businessmen for the glory of God that he could prosper and bless for the giving and the preaching of the gospel. And there are people that are called to preach and to speak and to go and do. You cannot allow the systems of this world to keep you from doing what God called you to do. You might be in the godly business. God wants to raise you up to prosper you, to bless you. He wants to make you into a millionaire so that you could give and be, and be great in, in serving the Lord in your ministry. But you cannot compromise your integrity and your character to try to do what God called you to do. There's always going to be something that's going to try to attack you from doing what God called you to do. To keep you from the, the call of God for your life. Jacob was called by God. He said, through you all the nations were going to be blessed. But even though the blessing was upon him, he could not see himself being blessed. So he began to live like everybody else. You need to stop living like everybody else. You are not like everybody else. You are a disciple of the Lord. You are anointed by the Holy Ghost. You are saved. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You need to start living like more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Where God is everything to you. Every day, I want to do the will of the Lord. Every day, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to serve God in my work. I'm going to serve God in my home. I'm going to serve God in my community. But it's my devotion first is to the Lord. I'm not going to do it the way everybody else tells me to do it because the way everybody else tells me to do it is going to put me in slavery because the only thing that everybody else is after is the things that I might have in finances. Their eyes are bad. They, they worship the God of money, not the God the, of the living Savior. Amen? And if you're not worshiping God, living for God, the living Savior and your eyes are focused on mammon, and your eyes are focused on, on, on the things of this world, your eyes are focused on money, you will compromise your family, you will compromise your integrity, you will compromise your ministry, you will compromise your future, and instead of fulfilling the plan of God for your life, the enemy comes in and just wipes you out by putting debt on your life, and next thing you know, you're a slave. You are not a slave, you are a son. Amen. Amen. God's made you for more than that, Amen. You have, to, you have to choose to say, I'm not going to work for Laban no more. Tell your neighbor, I'm not working for Laban. Amen. Amen. I, I, I know Rachel is beautiful. I know Rachel is beautiful, but God has a way of bringing Rachel, amen, into your life that doesn't cause you to have to work for a thief, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. You're, you're, you're bigger than that. You're greater than that, amen. amen. Say, I'm not working for Laban. I'm not working for Laban. Say it like you mean it. I'm not working for Laban. Because you're going to be put in situations that you're going to have to choose who's God, who are you going to serve? Who are you going to serve? Are you going to serve God or are you going to serve the drugs? Are you going to serve God or are you going to serve what people think about you? Are you going to serve God? Listen, politicians need to choose. Are you going to serve God or are you going to serve your party? Am I going to serve God or I'm going to serve this person 
I serve the Lord. And you have to make that decision. I serve God. Because the thing that the devil does is he is, he is only interested. The Bible says he steals, kills, and destroys. What is he doing? What is he stealing? What is he killing? What is he destroying? He's stealing, and he's killing, and he's destroying your time. Yeah. Your time. When Bishop Wafula came to the United States for the first time, it's so funny, you know, when, when I go to Africa and, and I meet different ministers you know, uh, the world doesn't really know them, but in their land, God is really using these men and these women greatly. Bishop Wafula has over 700,000 people in his ministry. Ain't that incredible? And so, he calls me up one day. He says, Pastor Kevin. Actually, he talks to us, Pastor Kevin. <laughs> where are you? I say, I'm, uh, I'm at home. In Texas? <laughs> yes. I'm coming to see you, brother. Where are you? You in Mombasa, Kenya? No. I am in Colorado. <laughs> I am coming to see you, brother. I said, brother, South Texas is far from Colorado. If I just have to come to see you and hug you and leave, I am still coming. I said, come on over, brother. And he showed up just to hug me, spend time together. Because it was the first time he was given permission to come into the United States. He tried to go to the UK, and the UK told him no, that he could not go to, to, to the UK. So he applied for the US, and the US gave him a visa. And so now he preaches. He says, for those that say no to you, you shall supersede them. UK told me no, but the U.S. said yes, so I superseded them. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I remember spending time with him in Mombasa. And I told him, brother, we're going to do some things together. We're going to do crusades. We're going to serve God. We're going to minister together. And he looked at me. He says, yes, while we're strong. <laughs> and I was thinking about that because I know a lot of ministers that it's very difficult for them to do the work of the Lord because their bodies have already become weak. They've already gotten older. It's very difficult. They don't have the time. They don't have the strength. I remember my first trip. I, I, I flew over 100,000 miles on my first trip going to every kind of nation, every, every part of the world. That takes endurance. That takes strength. Only God could give that. Amen. And if you would look at your life, if you realize that the enemy has stolen too much of your time, there are people that don't want to get married because, well, what if I make a mistake? But well, what if it's perfect? What if it's the will of God? Listen, I guarantee you, you're going to make a mistake anyway. <laughs> people don't even want children. They don't even want to, they don't want to build anything. They want to build a career. For what? So that someone could say, thank you for working for us for the past 14 years of your life. Whatever you want, and then they end up taking it. They give you a watch. <laughs> Say, don't work for Laban. Don't work for Laban. You're not too enthusiastic. I think I need to go a little deeper in the Kool-Aid today. I don't understand. I don't understand why people don't want to get married. I know there's some single people getting uncomfortable right now. Pastor, just keep on going. Just keep on going. Do you know, God says he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In other words, he's not just wanting to bless you. He wants to bless your kids. Amen. You got to give God something to bless. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we're going to have children. Praise God. Hey, we're making, we're, we're making room. We're making room. You got to give him something to bless. How long are you going to wait? Well, I don't know if she's the right. I don't know if he's the right one. Do you like each other? Yes. Does she smell good? Yes. Does she love Jesus? Yes. Sounds like the right one to me. Amen. I remember John Osteen, when, uh, when he was talking about, he said, John Osteen, uh, uh, Joel Osteen's father, 
he was talking about, he says, I don't understand why everybody has to go to premarital counseling. Premarital counseling. He says, when, when, when I met Dodie, I didn't need premarital counseling. I needed Dodie. <laughs> when Jacob saw, when he saw Rachel, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't need premarital counseling. He needed Rachel. And it takes time to grow the marriage. It takes time to, to, to become, you know, where you guys know each other and you're able to build. And, and it takes time. It's going to be difficult at the beginning. And you're going to you understand you have years of learning and they have years of learning and you're both learning how to learn how to grow together. That's normal. That's, that's why the, the body of Christ and the family need to encourage them to say, okay, it's good. Yes, you had an argument. All right, now go home. Amen. Amen. Why? Because God wants to bless your kids. Amen. He wants to show you his goodness, his faithfulness. He wants to make you into a, a strong man of God that you could put godly character and, and integrity into your son and, to your, and your daughters. He wants you to be a strong woman of God that could show your daughter what it is to be a woman of God, a woman of virtue. And it's not a coincidence that our, our society is so broken because we don't, nobody's getting married. Nobody's blessing their children. Nobody, everybody's working on building a career and then they get angry when the, their, their, the business that they thought that they were building ends up going bankrupt. Yeah. Come on. Those things could die. It's just money. It's just that. It, it comes, it goes. God blesses. But God wants to bless you. He wants to bless your family. He wants to bless your kids. Give them something to bless. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All the single people get very quiet today. Because you, 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 you're not supposed, you're not made to work for Laban. Every time you work for Laban, working for yourself, working for that company, working for something that's shiny. Every time you dedicate your life to living for that, all you're doing is destroying the years when God wants to use you to be a blessing to others. Amen. And you need to start changing that. You need to start declaring the blessing of God. If you're single, you need to begin to say, Lord, thank you. You're the one that's bringing me that wife or that husband. You're raising them up. As you are changing me, you're changing them, Father. And they're coming into my life quickly in Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, if, if I was single and I had not, not been married, if I was single, every girl I meet, I'd be like, how you doing? Are you Rachel? No? How are you doing? <laughs> I'll be making my intentions known. I'm looking for a wife. I want to have kids. I want to build a family. This is my ministry. Amen. And she said, oh, that's just too much. Good, you're not the one. <laughs> I talked to one friend who travels all over the world. He travels all over the world. And he's like, man, I'm just looking for the right one. I'm just looking for the right one. I said, bro, you've been to all these countries. <laughs> and you still can't find the right one? Right one? I, I, I opened up YouTube and I played that song, been around the world, did not I? I can't find my baby. I didn't even leave the valley. I found mine in Harlingen. <laughs> and we've been blessed. Hallelujah. Is my wife still here? Awesome. Keep her in the back. Don't let her come to the front, brother. But in everything in your life, you have to put God first. What is God's will for you? If, if it's God's will, if God says, you know, he who finds a wife finds a good thing, go find your wife. Well, I'm just hoping that she's up. No, you got to go find her. You have to go find her. Amen. Amen. Got really quiet here. <laughs> but there's just no good, there's just no good, good girls or there's no good, good guys. Come to church. Amen. Come to church. Someone says, well, you know, that one, he keeps, on, he keeps on talking to all the girls. Good. Maybe they'll get married. 
I am in the, re- I am in the relationship building business. <laughs> building relationship with God and building relationship amongst each other. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I could go on and on and on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But don't waste your life serving Laban. Don't waste your, wife, your, your, your life chasing after things that are not meant to grow in your life. They're not meant to be a blessing to your life. They just steal from you. There are relationships that you might have in your life that all they do is they take from you. All they do is, it seems like, you know, you think that you're, you're blessing them, but really they're just hanging on to you because they know they could get from you the things that you, you, you give it to them. They're wasting your time. They're wasting your energy. They're not interested in anything other than taking from you. You know, going back to relationship, if you're dating a girl... And it's been six months, and there's still no decision on what you're going to do. It's time to, to find someone else. Amen. Oh, man. Pastor, I've been dating this girl for three years, and I just don't know if she's the right one. <laughs> I've been dating this guy for four years, but he still hasn't asked me. To marry. No, you've been wasting your time. Come on. Does he have a twinkle in his eye? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because the worst thing is to waste all those years in a relationship that goes nowhere. You didn't give God anything to bless. And now you go into the next relationship. I don't want to give my heart. I was in the relationship for three years. That's your fault, not my fault. Six months into it, you should have known. Amen. Somebody's here for the first time. I, I'm not coming back to this church. But it's like that in everything. You have, listen, there is a call of God upon my life. There's a call of God on your life. Are they headed in that direction or not? Are they heading in that direction or not? Are they wasting your time for fulfilling what God's called you to be, which is a blessing? Or they're keeping you from your destiny? You have to decide. Some of you have jobs that you need to quit because it's not a place that God has put you there to be blessed. It's a place that was convenient at the time, but it's not convenient now. You can either quit or you can be fired one way or the other. God wants to bless you. He's either going to shut the door for you or you shut it yourself knowing that that's what the will of God is. Amen. We're not working for Laban. We're working for the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want God to bless me. I want God to bless me. Then obey him. When my father was called to the ministry, he was the number one salesman in his industry in the entire United States. And God said, quit your job. Work for me. He went home, told his wife, Ada, I'm quitting my job. I'm going to preach and serve the Lord all the days of my life. Amen. Seven of us in the family, five kids. And now no job, but every day he would wake up. He would get dressed in the morning. And he would leave the house. My mother would say, where are you going? I'm going to work. You don't have a job. <laughs> and he would leave in the morning, come back in the evening. Every day he did that. What was he doing? He went to the Bible bookstore, began to read the books. They would let him read whatever book they want, he wanted to read as long as he didn't bend the covers. He was preparing himself for what God had called him to do. He could have kept on working as a salesman and making money the way he was making it, but that wasn't the will of God for his life. He decided, I'm not working for Laban, I'm working for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He had no open doors. He had no invitations. He had, he had no place to go preach, but he had a call. And every day he would get himself ready. He would do what he could. He would get himself ready. Just think he was preparing every day. And one day they invited him to preach at a church. He was so excited. So excited to preach. He went to preach at a church in Alamo, Texas. At the end of the service, the pastor was was so thankful. He said, brother, you did good. We got an offering for you. And they gave him an offering. He's so excited. Listen, I'm a preacher now, so I understand this. He gets an offering. He gets his offering. Understand, he hadn't worked in months. The way we were living, it was just the grace of God. 
But there was no food in the house. I was a little kid, so I didn't know the difference. <laughs> he knows he can make money as a sale, in sales, but that wasn't the call of God in his life. So now he went to preach at church. He's getting the first money. He's thinking, he's thinking I got an offering. He opens up. It was $9. He gave God thanks. He said, Lord, thank you. I could go buy some milk. I could buy some bread. I could bring a little bit of food home. He's driving home, and God speaks to him. God tells him, take that offering and give it to your pastor. My dad says, Lord, rebuke the devil. <laughs> Get thee behind me, Satan. I don't listen to the voice of the enemy. But God kept on speaking to him. Give that offering. Give that offering. My dad was hungry and he decided, I'm going to buy a little bit of chicken. I'm going to go to the church of the chickens. That's what he says. And he drives into the parking lot. You know how it's all glass in the front? He drives into the parking lot to park. And right when he parked, he looked up, and his pastor was sitting right by the window, <laughs> eating chicken. My dad wanted to put it in reverse and leave. But his pastor saw and said, hey, Carlos. My dad took the envelope, put it underneath the seat, went inside, and ate his pastor's chicken. Afterwards, he looks at his pastor and says, Pastor, I have to obey God. So he goes to the car, and he gets the envelope. He says, the Lord told me to give you this. He gave him the offering. The only money he's had in a long time. He's driving home, and he's thinking, my wife is going to kill me. <laughs> Hadn't worked in a long time. There, there's, there was nothing coming into the house. And I had the opportunity to buy milk and bread. But now I gave away the offering. She's going to beat me up. <laughs> he gets into the house and he smells food being cooked. He goes into the kitchen and he sees food all over the counters. He said, Ada, where did you get these groceries from? She said, there was a woman that knocked on our door. She was at the supermarket and God told her to buy these groceries of over $100 worth of groceries and bring it to this house. Amen. You can live that way. Amen. But you have to serve the Lord. Amen. Don't serve Laban. Amen. We are here today because one man served the Lord. Where will your children be tomorrow if you will just serve the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you all blessed? Yeah. Stand up on your feet.